Hi guys, today we're doing a vlog on how to clean your tech. I've got a show tomorrow, so it's a perfect opportunity for me to clean my tech. Ideally, you should be cleaning your tech once a week, if not every time after you ride. And why do we clean our tech? Well, it's very, very simple. We spend a lot of money on our gear. We spend a lot of money on saddles, bridles, boots. And the more you clean them, and the better you keep quality of them, the longer they will last you. So I'm going to show you a couple of things that I use and show you how I do it. If you've got any comments, questions, queries, please don't hesitate to comment below and let's have a go at it. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to show you is how to clean your bridle. This bridle of mine is probably about 15, 16 years old. I've looked after it really well. Um, when I just bought it, I oiled it very, very well before I used it and played with it. That will we, do, we will do in a separate vlog altogether. I've put it together and left it together because I think sometimes people get really intimidated by the amount of leather that you have. We'll do a double bridle in a completely different section because I think that becomes very overwhelming if you haven't done a snaffle before. So this is how I would have my bridle put up and put together. So all I'm going to literally do when I take apart my bridle is literally undo every single buckle I can find. Um, I often think people try to overthink it a little bit. And unfortunately, when you put it back together, you're gonna have to overthink it a little bit. But I literally just find every single buckle I can and undo them. And then I start taking the leather apart. When you do this, just be careful that you don't lose any keepers or pads or things in the process. <clears throat> right, so the first thing I like to clean is my bit. So I like to soak the bits for a little bit. So that's why I've got two different separate buckets of water. I'm gonna put the bit in one bucket and I'm gonna use the other bucket for my leather stuff. Almost. Right, so I use for my snaffle bridle a bomber. Uh, it's got a control plate in the middle. These are FEI legal. Um, you'll notice that my bits are quite thin. I, my horse has got quite a tricky mouthpiece, um, quite a high canine low molar and a flat palate. So he doesn't have a lot of space, especially when you start working double bridles. Um, so I'll put in a different blog how to choose bits and things. Um, I think the most important thing for each person is to choose a bit that works for you. It's exactly the same as a saddle. It's got to fit the horse. So I'm literally just going to chuck it in water <coughs> and have it soaked. My bits get cleaned after every ride. I give them a quick wash down. I know it doesn't look that way. I have a horse who's got a tendency to love eating with his bit in his mouth. Um, and I kind of just allow it. He's quite an old boy. So, <clears throat> even though it doesn't look that way, I've now undone all the buckles. So I kind of just start pulling my bridle apart. The reason I take my bridle apart before I clean it it's very simple. It means I can get into all the nooks and crannies. And that means that if you've got leather that's wearing and tearing, especially if you look on your corners of your bullets and your buckles, it means that you can check it out and you can replace it or repair it before it becomes a problem. There's nothing worse than being in an arena and your bridle's breaking or your stirrup leather's breaking. So, I like to just take everything apart and put it separately so that I kind of know where everything is. Right. I use a crank nose band. Um, I don't use it to shut my horse's mouth quite tightly. Again, he's got a very funny shaped face. And I found previously without the crank nose band at the back and the padding at the back, I used to catch his um, chin at the back. Um, so I switched over to a crank nose band for that exact reason. Okay, so now I've taken all my leathers apart. I've kind of placed them in order. I like to use the CDM, the Carl, Day and Michael pro uh, products. If you've got any products that you prefer, please let me know. I'm happy to re do reviews if you guys have seen products that you're not quite sure of. Um, I've used these products for quite a while. You can also open the bottle and decant it into like a baby um, wipe container. Um, I just find for me, I prefer to use them separately like this. So before I even start using products, I wipe down everything. You'll notice that the step one has got a blue label on it and I'm quite OCD. So I've decided to use a blue cloth for that. 
So the water I'm using, it's probably at as about as warm as your bath water would be. You need to be able to touch it quite comfortably, but it needs to be warm enough to be able to get all the grit and grime off. There's no particular order that I clean tack in. Um, I take them apart, I wipe them off, I make sure that at the back I get all the grit and grime off, and then I simply place it back and I go on to the next stage. Sometimes with cheek pieces, pole pieces, and especially your flash, you might have to do a little bit of scrubbing. Um, these pieces are in contact with your horse's face quite a bit, and especially if you've got a rough piece of leather at the back, you might need to put a bit more effort in. Um, like I said, I clean my tack once a week, so I tend to not have those problems. The problem I do have is on my flash and on the reins where it's in contact with my horse's neck. So literally, all I'm doing is I'm just rubbing over it, and especially, you rub the front to get rid of the dust, but that's not the part that's in contact with your horse. The back end's the part that's in contact with your horse. So I tend to really make sure that I get that very clean. And while I'm giving it a wipe down, I'm checking, is all the holes still okay? If I go across a buckle, is the buckle still intact? Like I say, you don't want to be halfway through a ride and something snaps. Right, so here we go with a flash. You'll see it's quite grimy. Again, I have a horse who loves eating while he's got a bit in his mouth. Um, and so I tend to spend a little bit more time on things like that. Um, the one thing I don't suggest you do is dunk your whole bridle straight back into a bucket of water. It's not good for the leather. Um, it just eats all the oils out of them and you're gonna have to end up spending a lot more time oiling your tack to keep it as pliable as possible. The big reason tack goes is because the leather gets too dry or because the stitching goes. Leather gets too dry because you don't use enough oil, stitching goes because you use too much oil. So my rule of thumb is normally when you start using tack, you give it a proper oil, you play the leather soft, and then, depends on your climate, I find that I need to oil my tack when it's wet um, to kind of preserve that tack as much as possible. Um, again, each to his own. I think, you know, you need to know your horse, you need to know your tack well enough to be able to go, well, my tack needs an oil. Um, don't just oil it because you can, oil it because you have to, um, but don't not oil it when your tack is dry and the leather's screaming for oil. Right, so that is most of the bridle done. Um, I use rubber reins, so they're leather on the outside with a little rubber grip on the inside. They're quite thin. I don't have the biggest hands, um, and especially when you then get to a double bridle, it's really hard to hold a lot of leather in your hands when you don't have the biggest or strongest hands. Um, the unfortunate part of this is that the rubber here does tend to go, so I always double check the stitching on these, especially since I've got a show tomorrow, I really don't feel like having it break. And then I always find that on my reins right at the end, these little bits here get quite grimy. Um, so that's one. For those of you who Kind of don't have your own tack and always wonder oh but why is there inside buckle and outside buckle so the inside buckle is called a billet and it's quite easy to remember what goes on the inside and what goes on the outside because billets go on the inside and buckles go on the outside um there's no hard and fast rule in terms of billets and buckles i think for me personally billets look neater but in terms of changing tack and changing sizing buckles make it much easier and quicker to change things around. Right, so now I've given everything a quick wipe down. So now I'm going to start using products. And CDMs are pretty cool. You've got a step one and a step two. It's like foolproof. So I wring out my cloth as much as I can. And a quick couple of sprays. So this is the step one, they call this the tack cleaner. Um, what I like about this, and as it says it on the packet, it's an antifungal formula that prevents mold and mildew. 
which is pretty awesome if you've got tack that you are packing away and not using for a while. Um, or if you live in quite a wet climate and you don't ride every single day. Um, it's really nice to protect your leather and you know that you can get on and, and, and go ride. Um, what I also like about this product is it doesn't create sticky residue like some of the others that I've tried. Um, it's just a very natural product, very easy to use. You don't need a lot of it. I think I've had these two containers for years and years. Look, I only have the one horse, um, so my tack cleaning is probably a lot less than many other professionals, but it works for me. Um, in terms of how much to use, I normally do two sprays and then I do the whole bridle and then I do two more sprays and then I'll do my reins. My saddle I'll often use a lot more on. Um, I find my saddle gets much dirtier than my bridle, but we'll get to that. Um, and I'll show you why in a moment. So yeah. And again, you'll see that I just pick up and place back and I kind of go from left to right. It's my little system. Um, I know some people like to just dump everything on a pile on the floor. Um, for me, the product dries so quickly and so evenly that I kind of have to keep track of everything that I've cleaned so that I don't clean something twice or worst case scenario, end up not cleaning something. And you'll notice that because I scrubbed my tack a little bit when I started when I just wiped it off with water. I don't spend a lot of time now. I use the product more to seal my leather rather than clean it. Um, when I was quite much younger in my juniors, I was taught how to clean tack with saddle soap and leather oil. And to be fair and honest, if I had the time to do my tack that way, I definitely would. It's definitely the way to go. Um, I think the new products have made us slightly lazy, but technology in my eyes is a brilliant thing. So yeah, I, I think to each its own. Now when I do my reins, I do run over them, but I try and not put too much pressure at the bottom. Because again, the leather's there to help me grip. It's not necessarily great for me to scrub it off. And then, especially where you're holding the reins a lot, it tends to go quickly. Unfortunately, leather reins are one of those things that I tend to replace once a year, if not more, depending on how much I'm riding. Um, and there's not much you can do about it. My, the rest of my bridles lasted forever, but my, my reins get replaced quite regularly. Right, so now I've used my step one on all my leather, and I now, for me, go and clean my bit first and then go back and condition my leather. Um, again, personal preference, you can leave your bits in longer or if you don't particularly want to clean your bits, that's fine. I use the Springer Dimer paste. Um, it can be quite pricey, but I just find on all metal, if you use this, it just gives it a really nice polish. And even though I rinse it off the bits, I tend to find that when I've actually cleaned my bits with them, my horse tends to be more accepting of the contact. Um, I have heard from, from some German trainers that the Springer, the, the, the diamond paste makes the bits taste better. Um, I don't know how true that is, but it, it works for me. So yeah. So I take a cloth and I've now soaked the bit, which means that all the gunk and grime that is still accumulated to this comes off really, really easily. Um, I'm quite comfortable using my hands, not everybody will be. Um, again, I, I tend to hose my bits off, dunk them in a bucket every day. So by the time I get here, they're not actually that dirty. Right, so now all I do is I take a little bit of diamond paste and you really need like a pea size. Like, pea size guys and I just rub my bit with it the other thing that diamond paste is really good for is cleaning spurs and if you have normal stainless steel stirrups they're quite cool so this is Jet she's decided to make a slight little cameo Jet's one of the four-legged kids that doesn't have to sleep in the stable you're gonna see quite a few of them sorry guys still 
Um, right, so you'll notice that this bit is ridiculously shiny now. Um, and I've literally just used a small, small amount. I like to just dunk it in and then on a clean part of the cloth, just dry it. Um, again, I, I always worry to put too much chemicals into something that's going into my horse's body. Um, yeah, I, 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 from what I understand, it can't do harm. Um, I just always err on the side of caution. So now I've got a clean bit and I've got clean tack, but I do not yet have conditioned tack. Um, the one thing you'll notice that I don't clean is my little neoprene pad that goes at the back of my crank nose band. Um, probably about once a month when they get quite gunky, then I'll give them a good scrub. Um, I added some Velcro to this to make my life easier. Um, but they, they come out without the Velcro. I just find it's nice for it to sit to the leather. Um, you do get these in leather as well. I just find that this is nice and wide and it's soft and it's bendy. So it, it, it works for us. Right. So now we're going to use the step two conditioner. And what I mostly like about this is the fact that it creates a barrier. It does leave a really nice shiny finish, which is fantastic for shows. I always feel you go into a show and it's so much nicer to look good and you feel more confident. Where if you go in there with grimy tech and you know, you kind of always wonder, do people judge me on that too? They don't in dressage, but I think, you know, can't help, can't, can't make a difference, but it makes a difference to me. Right, so literally again, I take my tack piece by piece, and all I do is I run my cloth over it, and this is just to seal my tack. Um, it's already clean. If I feel that my tack is very dry and it needs a proper oil, then I would oil it before I do this. Um, I honestly, if, if I was oiling tack, I would actually wipe it down with a cloth, then oil it, and then clean it again. Um, but again, to each his own, you know, guys, I think one thing that riding has learned, taught me, is that there's no right and wrong. There's maybe a better way, and there's maybe a more productive way of doing things. But if you find a system that works for you, then stick to it. And I think what would be awesome is if you guys could comment and say, oh wait, I do this, this, this way, and this is awesome, but you know, why don't you try this? Because I think the one thing that the Inquestrian community can do from each other is learn. And um, that's really what these vlogs are about, is, is, is sharing knowledge and giving you guys a portal as well, a form to, to chat about it and to have open conversations about it. Right, so, I use a lot more conditioner than I do cleaner. And again, how much depends completely on what the tack is feeling like. So I kind of try and run my hand over it quite a bit and feel, am I happy? Do I need more? Um, always remember guys, you can always add more. You don't have to, you can't take away. So what I'm gonna do now, before I even get to my reins, is I'm actually going to put my headpiece together with my bit. Then I clean the reins and I put the reins together. Again, one of those things that works for me. Um, obviously you can do however it works for you. Right, so when I put a bridle together, and originally I, I got so overwhelmed with all these pieces that look exactly the same. So I kind of figured out a system that works for me. And for me, that is finding my pole piece first and making sure that one is the correct way up and that my throat lash, the long piece of my throat lash is away from me. Then I take my brow band and I'm quite fortunate my brow band can go up or down and I run my brow band in. And I find that just doing this gives me structure to my bridle because now I can already see how everything's gonna fit in. The next thing I do is I take my nose band. My bridle, my nose band threads underneath. Some of you might have um, monopole pieces, or you might have a bridle, a brow, uh, 
nose band that goes over your pole piece, that's okay too. So I've got my nose band in. Now it's very important to remember to tie your nose band to your nose band. So if you're a little bit like, oh, oh, I don't know which part is which part, just follow the strap. Make sure you've got the strap that is part of the nose band so that you attach the nose band to the nose band. I think often we kind of rush to get things done and then you put the nose band onto the throat lash or the nose band onto a cheek piece and then you get to a show and it's like, oh, wait, something's not on. Right, so now I've got pole piece, I've got brow band and I've got the base of my nose band. The next thing I add is my cheek piece. Now, on the side where my throat lash is long, it's pretty easy because I know it's the only other strap. I decided to use this pole piece because you'll notice that the cheek pieces, the strap for the cheek pieces is much wider than the strap for the throat lash. So it's really hard to, to confuse yourself. Um, I've also punched extra holes into my cheek pieces. Um, again, my horse has got a funny shaped face and that's fine. And so I've punched a half a hole on either side um, just because then my bit fits better and my bridle fits better. So now, the side that your throat lash is not on, long on, it's always a little bit like mm. Now again, I've chosen to have thick cheek pieces and a thin throat lash. But if you are confused, you take your bridle and you go, which is in the front? Your throat lash will always go to the back. So the strap that goes to the front of the face would be the one that attaches to your cheek piece. When you're putting a bridle together and it's not your horse or it's a new horse, I often just suggest people look at the buckle, the hole that gets used the most. Um, again, this is my horse, so I know it quite forwards, backwards, upside down. Right, so in this moment, I would put the bit in. Now, bomber bits are really, really awesome. They have numbering and lettering on the plate, and you know that that has to be the right side up. It also has the side, the size, and the size goes on the left side. So it's really easy with bomber bits to know which side is up, which side is down. Some bits don't have a right side up and a right side down. If you're not sure, I strongly recommend that you kind of take a photo before you take your bridle apart so that you can gauge, am I right, am I wrong, while you're putting the bridle apart. And if in doubt, ask someone who really knows. Ask your instructor, ask the stable manager. You know, people who care about you and want you to do the right thing. And I think this is a learning curve. It's not, or you're not always gonna do it right. I remember the amount of times that I put this specific bit upside down, um, I can't count. So you'll notice that on most of my bridle, I have a buckle. But on my bits and my reins, I tend to have billets. So a billet is very different from putting together than a buckle is. So for billets, I tend to push the leather through both keepers, then hook it onto the billet and slide it back into place. If you have a way that works better for you, please let me know. It took me forever to figure out how to put billets together. Um, it's not a thing that is commonly seen in South Africa. I think South Africa mostly uses buckles. Um, but because this is a custom-made bridle, um, I chose to have billets on it. Right. So now you have your nose band and you have your bit attached. The next part you'll notice that my nose band is half put together. So I'm going to take this back end of the crank and attach, ooh, attach its pad to it. So the way I do it, I like to tighten everything from the left side of my horse. So my entire bridle is put together so that it's easy for me to do things on the left. So what I do is I find the right side of my bridle. I take the nose band, and again, there's so many different ways that you can put together a crank. And if you don't have a crank, then obviously your buckle's already attached. So I make a little loop like that on the right side because I want to be able to tie it on the left. And then I slip my pad through. And again, you kind of have to have an idea, how is this bridle gonna fit onto my horse's face? So if you look at it like that, the pad's gonna sit like that. Now the problem with these pads is they slip out very, very easily. So I always just secure the buckle just to make sure that I don't lose my pads. This is especially important at a show. 
things go missing easily. So the last thing I'm gonna to put together on my bridle, on the headpiece, is my flash. Now, I am slightly superstitious when it comes to riding. I was taught five buckles on the left, all pointing down. So my flash goes through to the left again, and I tie it with a buckle point, with a leather strap pointing down. Now, this setup means that my flash can easily get lost. So again, when I put my bridle together, when, if I've done riding, I simply just slip the buckle through the flash so that it doesn't get lost. All right, so now I've got my entire headpiece nicely put together. The only thing that is missing is my reins. So, I give my reins a quick wipe down. Now, with this leather conditioner, I try and miss the rubber. I just find that sometimes the products that are meant to feed leather tend to eat through rubber. So I literally, I do the part that has no rubber on it and the other side that's got no rubber on it. And then I tend to lay it flat with the rubber side down and I literally take a finger and I just run it over the leather part. So this action here means that I completely skip out the rubber and I try and look after my rubber as much as possible. Um, again, it's something that I kind of played around with and it seems to make my rubber last longer. If anyone out there has got a proper clean way of doing this so that you can look after the rubber as best as possible, please let me know. Because like I say, I go through a pair of rubber reins once a year and I have three pairs of them because my double bridle has two on them. So again, you clean the top, you clean the bottom, lay it flat so that the rubber points down and you just wipe the top. Okay. Some people like to put their reins together at the buckle first. I don't. I tend to find that if I put the buckle together first and then try and put it on my bridle, I have to undo the buckle anyway and re-put it together. So, again, these are billets. So billets go to the inside. So I imagine, okay, this is on my horse. It goes to the inside. It goes through both keepers. And I find the billet. And then I do the same with the other one. Okay. So now I've got my reins on my bridle, but my reins are not buckled at the end. And this is the tricky part because I'm a bit OCD about reins being twisted. So I take them both flat in my hand and I run my hand down so that I make sure that I get all the twists out and then I buckle them at the end. So in this way, I kind of make sure that my reins are always right side up and not twisted and the way I want them. So now the trick comes to put this whole thing up because if you leave your bridle like this and you chuck it in the car, I promise you, you're gonna spend about 10 minutes figuring out which side is up, which side is down. So I like a figure of eight. So you take your range, you put it on your pole piece, you take your throat lash, you run your throat lash around the front, around the back, and you find the buckle where it's supposed to up, and you buckle it in like that. So now you've got a bridle that you only have to do undo one strap to be able to put it on your horse, but it's put together like that. And that's how I clean my bridle.